Welcome back everybody to another episode of Road Trip with Nick. Great to have you here as always. This week is going to be a little different. We're actually going to take you along on a little adventure uh, that we went on recently. We just wrapped up a house sit in Chicago for two weeks and did a little exploring around the city in December while we were there. So here we go. Angel had the idea of going to the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry because of their Christmas Around the World exhibit and uh, Holidays of Light. She was geeking out over the enormous Christmas tree and the magicalness of it all. It was really cool. Yeah. Uh, every half an hour it snowed inside. So, in addition to the incredibly cool Christmas display that they had on, the holiday lights around the world, which was crazy fun and cool and magical. You saw the video, it snowed inside. Magic. Nick even tried some of the snow. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I didn't try the snow. She didn't try it. It was not yellow snow. Not yellow. <laughs> <laughs> the other super cool part was that they were doing a Pixar special experience and this guy has been super into WebGL and 3D Canvas and a bunch of other programmer things that I really don't really know what he means, but I'm just like, rad. Nerdy stuff. <laughs> yeah. So let's go check this out. And they're going to talk about programming, how they do the Pixar programming. And I casually mentioned to him like, oh, by the way, there's a super cool Pixar experience thingy going on. And he was like, what? Needless to say, I knew he would freaking love this exhibit. For all you kids out there, this is why you pay attention in math class, so you can do cool shit like this. Are you so excited to be here? So excited. <laughs> so excited. Super cool. They talked about the programming that goes into it, and we're like gonna go geek out with a bunch of uh, six-year-olds. Cause Buzz Lightyear is here, people. Only follow the Ferraris. <laughs> so, turns out they don't just go from sketch to digital modeling, they actually create a clay sculpture to then take and create a 3D model from. So fascinating. Okay, Nick and I are gonna try to assemble robots in uh, 30 seconds and we'll see who does a better robot. <laughs> All right, this is my robot. Looks pretty good. This is Nick's robot. <laughs> Looks pretty good. So, I think this is the clear winner. We're gonna tweak some variables and make some grass. Sweet. Just like recipes, you gotta try a few times to make sure you get it right. All right, got our settings dialed in. We're gonna hit generate grass. Oh, beautiful grass. That's Lovely. really nice grass. I think it needs a little bit shorter. Okay, a little so, shorter. And uh, a little bit more curvature. Okay. A little more curve, curve variety. Good. A little clumpier, a little more color variation. Yeah, generate it. Wow, oh, really nice grass. Excellent work. Thank Great. you. Seriously, you guys. 
See the um, vertices moving? Vertices? Oh, yeah, totally. We found out that on average there are six movies being made at Pixar at any given time. And in order to make six movies at one time, they have the render farm, which really has no animals in it does have though uh, 30,000 processors which run 24 hours a day to make all the cool scenes in a Pixar movie. Processors are purring away just like a room full of kittens. 24 hours a day. <laughs> Seriously. They're rendering billions of frames and on average did they say it takes like 29 hours to yeah. make one frame yeah. of a Pixar movie. And if it's running at 24 to 30 frames per second to make an entire hour and a half movie? That's a lot of rendering time. Tons of rendering time. And yeah. each frame is like 1.5 billion pixels. Billion pixels. <laughs> that is a ridiculous amount of pixels. And it also makes a lot of sense when you look at the Pixar movies and see all the detail and all the really, really sharpness that is in every single frame. Um, what was it in Up? Yeah, there was a fabric simulator in the in the credits. Somebody who just did the patches on, you know, so cool. Russell's On his Boy Scout uniform, yeah. yeah. We also did another super fun Christmas focused thing there was this pop-up bar in Wrigleyville, and apparently it's new this year, we had no idea. But it's called Santa Baby Bar, and... There were over 50 decorated trees, you know, upright, hanging from the ceiling. Upside uh, down, yeah. hanging from the ceiling. Something like 70,000 lights strung inside and out. Wall-to-wall -wall Christmas. <laughs> Even though it's a bar, it's actually pretty family friendly. And if you're over the age of 21, there's also really fun holiday themed drinks, including a giant cup of boozy hot cocoa. Family sized hot cocoa, but not so much family friendly <laughs> on that. So obviously we didn't order that because it serves like eight people with a side of gut rot, but it could be yours for the nominal price of $55. Ta-da! Ta if you're heading to Chicago in December, be sure to stop at these two places. Go for the hot cocoa if you're feeling it. Yeah. If you've been to either of these places and, or experienced either one of these things, tell us in the comments below. What was your favorite part? What drink did you try at the Santa Baby Bar? What did you love about the Museum of Science and Industry? Or did you get to see the Pixar event? All the things. If you like Christmas, click the like button down below. If you don't click it, we'll assume you don't like Christmas. <laughs> no pressure to click that, but you know, we're just hanging out waiting. That's a wrap. All right. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Just, you, you just roll your eyes. That's good. I roll. <laughs> He's been really into Snapchat. I've been crushing the Snapchats recently. Cassie, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's just been out of control. So I rolled my eyes because.
I was mostly like, oh my gosh, here we go again. <laughs> we should clip one of those into this video. Mm. You better have a Christmas list. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about, you guys. What? What can I say? 